No, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, um, it's my friend's place where we're staying for a few days. Oh, okay. I was like, yeah. good yeah. effort, man. <laughs> if you yeah. I have never done a uh, Christmas tree. All right. Sounds like we are live, boys. Uh, and if I can figure out how to get back on Zoom. Um, Where are you? Tech support is here. Yeah, there you go. That's tech support. <laughs> Finally. All right. Sorry for the delay. Um, welcome to Fans in Blue podcast. Uh, we've got a good group of six here today. Two first timers. Got Sid Girani, uh, possibly the most patriotic of the lot, given he's the only one in the India jersey. Uh, I think vietnam has got some sort of jersey on. I got the Delhi Capitals jersey. Delhi Capitals, <laughs> all right. Very, very Mumbai car like. Uh, <laughs> uh, and we got Jit uh, Ravi Shankar from all the way from Auckland, New Zealand. Whoa. Um, so we're, we're here to chat in slightly uh, better, more upbeat mood. Um, you know, thought we would uh, start off. Um, today's proceedings by um, going to Kushal Modi, who was perhaps the most optimistic of the lot last time. What were your thoughts on uh, India's comeback? I was. Uh, it was a great win. Um, I, I was expecting a fight back. You know, I, I said that it was going to be a close, close win. But I guess at the end of the day, eight wickets, um, we really ran them through. And just overall, I thought. You know, no hangover from Adelaide, which was, um, which was, I mean, you don't know what you're going to get, right? Either you're going to get rolled over, you're going to see a really, really good fight back. So I was just happy that we saw a great fight back and, you know, we didn't get rolled over. So that's yeah, my thoughts. Um, let's go to Rashid, since you, you were sort of of the opposite view, you thought the Indian team would get um, Badly beaten again in the MCG test. What What are your thoughts? Did you think um, anything surprised you in particular? Yeah, I don't know. I was very happy to be proved wrong. You're right, Nick. I, I did think we'd get kind of rolled over once again, uh, given the team that we were going in with. Um, I think kind of the Jadeja's batting actually to me was the highlight. Um, I think kind of he played like a proper batsman. Uh, from a mindset perspective. And I think kind of having that depth and allowing kind of that crucial partnership between him and Rane uh, was actually the game changer, actually. We managed to get that extra 70, 80 runs, which then en enabled the lead. So I think kind of that to me was a huge highlight. And then I think kind of the second highlight was just the control that our bowlers managed to kind of give. Um, you know, the Australians faced, you know, 100 odd overs actually and kind of, you know, normally they would have scored 350 to 400 runs. Um, but the fact that they, they did, they just about got to 200, actually allowed us to kind of really control the game. So those, those to me, were the, were the two kind of big highlights. And of course, kind of, you know, great win, great captaincy. Um, but I think if we can kind of progress with the control that the bowlers have given us and kind of, you know, getting more runs from the low order. Yeah, it's a great point you bring up and I'll, I'll pose this point to uh, Jit next, which is, you know, what's your opinion on having a five bowler strategy, um, you know, putting Jadeja in there? Some people think he's good enough to bat in the top five or six, regardless of his bowling. Um, but having someone like him in there, um, do you think that's a big game changer for the Indian test side? I don't know why he doesn't play every game. Um... To be honest, I, I think his average is better than Shane Warne's at the moment, um, uh, overall, right? Uh, it, it's actually a, a, an astounding stat about Jadeja. Is he's the most underrated spinner in the world. Um, I, I think his bowling skills um, and what he brings with the bat is just astonishing. And 
to be honest, um, I'd have him in every side, um, no matter what wicket you're playing on. Um, as a left arm spinner, you know, he, he, he's all about how he uses pace, um, flight, um, doesn't turn it a great deal. He doesn't need to, right? Um, and, and I think he can be very useful on all sorts of wickets. Um, and if he, he contributes in the field as well, um, he's one of the best fielders India has. So I, I think he's a shoo-in in every match. Sid, you're a left arm spinner yourself. Um, what, are you, uh, what are your thoughts on Jadeja before um, maybe going to Vedang? I'm curious uh, you know, to move the conversation on to Rahane after that, but r- really quick. Um, well, I completely agree with Jit. Um, I said it uh, from the beginning, and I know we're focusing on the test side at the moment, but I would have him playing every single game for India in every format. Um, the fact of the matter is that more than <clears throat> you're batting and bowling, uh, every fielder saving 10 or 15 runs at every possible instance or match that he gets the opportunity to do so. He's doing that every time. And to top that off, um, I also agree that he definitely has the capability to be batting in the top five or six. That is my viewpoint. And um, with regards to five bowler strategy, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't, I would disagree with that. He, he, he plays two roles. He's, he's a genuine, genuine all-rounder. So um, him alongside Ashwin is very good for India in all conditions. They've proved that they can do it in the subcontinent over and over again. And uh, now they're doing it in Australia as well. Uh, so I would have him in every single 11. I don't think he should be dropped for the... For, I mean, I don't think he will be, but, um, you know, he's extremely valuable to the Indian team. Um, probably one of the most valuable players in the 11. And with regards to um, what Jid said about the fact that he doesn't really get much turn, when the pitch gives him assistance, he does. And when it doesn't, he doesn't need to turn the ball. Uh, His variations with pace and um, his accuracy, um, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, it's unbelievable. And I agree, he's uh, extremely underrated and he should be playing, playing every game. Uh, His, his, with the bat, his performance with Rohane. Um, it proves that as well. So, uh, absolutely. Completely agree with Jit. I, I sort of want to bring up a point that Rashid brought up, which is, you know, I watched his uh, the whole innings. Um, I mean, I watched the whole test match. But sort of the, the innings that I uh, uh, really appreciated was Rahane's. But I also really appreciated Jadeja's knock. Because for me, what he did really well is he left the ball well. And not too many Indian batsmen have been, um, or at least in the, you know, uh, recent past, the New Zealand series, this series in the first test match, not many of them have been willing to leave the ball that often. And he did face the second new ball and they played really well against the second new ball. Now you could argue that some of their concentration might have been broken at the end of day's play and they came back and, you know, went for a quick single in in pursuit of his 50. But um, aside from one or two sort of slip ups, that 100 run partnership was critical for India. And I think it was you know, Rahani was playing phenomenally well, but a lot of it was down to the fact that Jadeja actually had a lot of patience. You know, he didn't really go for too many flashy shots. Um, the other guy who didn't go for too many flashy shots, obviously, was Rahane. Vedang, what were your thoughts on on Rahane's knock um, as captain? You know, how, how big and how important was that knock in the context of Indian cricket? I mean... It goes without saying that, you know, I mean, it was a pivotal knock today. He scored 100 out of a 325-odd run innings. I mean, it was pivotal. But I just wanted to, I mean, in a way, carry on the point which Jit and Sid made uh, for Jadeja and the question which you asked. I mean, the difference between both the tests were that, uh, you know, we were 189 out for two in Adelaide and we folded up for 244. Similarly, we were about 130 or 140 out for four. I think, um, in Melbourne. And, uh, you know, the difference which Jadeja made was completely, I mean, there for everyone to see. I mean, you ran up a score of 326. So, you know, the difference between the two was, I I would say Jadeja. And I would, in fact, stick my head out and again say, in fact, you know, we are, Ashwin is the first person who, you know, we go for uh, in overseas test matches as a spinner. But I think you should really uh, contemplate and, you know, the management should really think of actually putting Jadeja in front and giving Ashwin the second priority, I would say. Just because what Ashwin, what Jadeja brings to the table is batting, bowling and 
we really discounted test matches even now in test matches nowadays fielding makes a big big difference you know that odd catch here or there like today you've seen so many catches go down this uh, series so you know ashwin is a very very uh, you know uh, i would say a below average fielder so i i would say that you know after this we should definitely think of jadeja as our first a person to go to for even overseas test as compared to ashwin though ashwin is a good i mean i'm not saying i'm not taking anything out of his performance but do you have to compare what each bring to that table if you have to go in with only one spinner that is hey, kushal really quickly um, uh, we've talked about this in the past a few times which is it's almost like the indian side needs to change its mindset you know you pick jadeja as a batsman not as an all-rounder not necessarily as a bowler you pick him as the batsman and then his bowling is a plus even though he's a really good bowler is that the right way to think about it that's the way i would think about it um so you know it wouldn't be ashwin or jareja for me jareja is a batsman and he'll give you that 10 15 overs if we need you know if if a bowler gets injured or if um you know he he is in, in reality even though his record is amazing but it's because of bowling a lot in india um you know in reality he is not as good a spinner as ashwin is but um you know as a second bowler as a second spinner you know the fifth bowler he's fantastic but i i would look at him as a batsman plain and simple i mean just see the way he defended he left um he was not rushed at all like i mean if you look at some of you know like the dismissals of like agarwal or shaw in the previous match or um uh even rahane you know like just getting caught behind in, in these guys were rushed you know they they were like mid they were in the mid stride you know like moving forward or back jadeja was not rushed at all he looked so solid and composed at the crease i mean i would say he was as composed as kohli in the first match not rushed not confused about what he wanted to do you know he didn't want to attack or defend he played the ball to the merit i mean i think you know we should we are we're missing the trick by looking at him as a bowler who can bat but he's really he can be whatever we want him to be and i think he's a batsman um when it comes to overseas conditions um you know and he can play just as a batsman who can bowl a bit and then when it comes to indian conditions he can be you know jerry jones like the bowler who can also bat a bit you know he's very flexible i mean i think he's uh we're missing a trick for sure i would i would you know if if we had to bring in sharma say i know i'm going a little ahead but if we had to bring in sharma for the next match and rohit was opening um and we needed some i would i would get rid of vihari you know and i would keep jareja i mean it's just you know all if we, you know like stuff like that so i i think jareja is that good a player and that good a batsman that i could he would be a solid number 6 for india so um sorry, you, Nick, gonna, sorry. you mind if i all right go just, ahead go ahead uh, just really quickly um I do agree with Kushal that you know they missed the trick by looking at him as a bowler who can bat but I'm not of the opinion that we should look at him as a batsman who can bowl a lot of other countries do this India somehow do not do this where there is the concept and phenomenon of a genuine all-rounder where you can pick a player because they are good enough in both aspects to make the 11 even if they wouldn't be able to do something else like for example take Pandya Pandya in the test team will not make it as a batsman he's only there because he can do both at the moment he's not bowling so he's not picked jadeja at the or stokes in england for example can be picked on the merit of just one of their skills each time in every 11 so i think india should go in looking at it as five genuine batsmen four genuine bowlers or or whatever and then two solid all rounders who can fill the role at both in in both ways jadeja being one of those Just, that's just the point I want. Uh, that's an interesting point. I'm going to go to Jit next yeah. uh, before going to Rashid. Um, I sort of agree with both your points. The, the, I, I guess the way I was thinking about it is uh, when we're playing overseas, when in, the Indian team is playing overseas, Jadeja plays more as a batsman who can also bowl because you would need to have three seamers in the side. And optically having two spinners um, worked here. it may not always work like for example jit in Eng- in new zealand having two spinners may actually go against you like 97% of the wickets or something in the last 3 years in test cricket in new zealand have been base so uh i guess that's one thought process in india of course he always plays and he plays as whatever 
I think he he's also proven that he should always play overseas, but then you're relying more on his batting. So I think we're sort of saying the same thing, Sid, but it's it's sort of uh, just sort of a mindset change because that yeah. then determines how you pick the rest of the bowlers. Jit? Yeah. Yeah. You know, not to draw comparisons, but I but I feel like we have um, a a Jacques Callas, I guess, for for India here. Um, but also, let's not jump to conclusions too quickly. He's only scored like 1,900 runs, right? Um, he's, he's got over 200 wickets. So when you put that together, I think just, just practically speaking, picking him as a batsman is, is tough. I, I think the combination of having Rishabh Pant and him has been really, really interesting. I, I think Rishabh Pant also adds a, a, a crap load in that, in that batting lineup, right? So uh, I, I think the fact that there's an aggressive left-handed batsman and then someone who comes in after Rishabh, like uh, Jadeja, is, is a very important combination to have as well. Uh, and I think uh, in terms of Jadeja himself, agree he could be picked for either skill, batting or bowling. But ultimately, his stats speak to the fact that he is the better bowler out of his skill. He still hasn't proven at the international level to be a really, really good batsman. He has a long way to go. Interesting uh, thoughts from everyone. So it sounds like some of us in the batting around the camp, some of us in the bowling around the camp. And that usually means you have an all-rounder in front of you. Um, Rashid, I'm going to start off this next uh, quick section, section with you, which is before we go on to selection and for the next test, um, your thoughts on the uh, debutant Mohamed Siraj. Brilliant, actually. Like he, 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 he was fantastic. Uh, he wasn't overawed by the condition, and it's very easy. It's MCG. It's the Boxing Day Test. Uh, we're coming off a huge loss in Adelaide. Um, he, he was fantastic, actually. From a, a, a mindset, uh, the control that he gave. He looked like taking wickets. Um, he was impressive in the in the warm up game against a strong Australia A side. Um, and honestly, kind of going go, going into the tour, um, you know, he's probably benefited from playing for the Royal Challengers Bangalore with Kohli as the captain. Um, but boy, has he, he he's had a really good test match. Now, obviously, you can't you know judge by just one performance, and he he got he has to kind of constantly put in, um, and kind of you know similar to the point of Jadeja, where you know he's definitely improved as a batsman. Uh, come up with some fantastic performances in the recent past, but he still has a long way to go. Um, but kind of just on the Siraj point, great first test match, um, you know, but he got, he has to kind of do it day in, day out. Yeah, no, I, I tend to agree with that. I think he, um, his line and length was immaculate. Um, from what I've seen in the years of watching cricket in Australia, you know, the wickets are, so they're different to what they would be in England or New Zealand or India where, I feel like the bowlers have more assistance from the wicket. In Australia, you do get more bounce, but oftentimes the best bowlers are, are the McGraws, you know, of the world who would be lit, lit, just relentless at you, perfect line and length at all times. And you do get a bit of seam movement. You do get a bit of swing sometimes. You do get a bit of um, spin. I mean, Warren used to turn the ball a lot in those wickets. But I think it's, it's uh, the conditions where you often have the guys who are the most consistent and relentless are the ones that are the most successful. Um, Vedang, what are your thoughts on that? And do you think that uh, Siraj is, is a good prospect? So I think, I mean, just to sum it up, I think I totally agree with Rashid what he said. Uh, but the thing which was very impressive about Siraj was that the length which he bowled was very, very, I mean, it was the Australian length, as you call it, just short of the length. So, you know, it was, it was uh, you know, the batsman was quite uh, discomforted by his length. And I think that is why I think he got three wickets, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, Australia's first innings. So, I think all those, I mean, you see all those lengths which were there. I think the length was perfect, which he bowled. And obviously, I mean, you know, he, he personally also had a huge loss. So, that just shows his dedication to the game that he lost his father, but he still decided to stay on. So, that just shows the metal of, you know, and his perseverance to do well at, at the level. So, I mean, I'm totally for it. But yes, as again, Rashid said that I he has to prove it, you know, uh, day in, day out, uh, you know, over a period of time. 
for him to be called as a you know quality bowler so but a, but a good start definitely a good start and someone who we should you know persevere with Vishal, is uh, Shubman Gill an improvement on Prithvi Shaw or? <laughs> By Maya's man. <laughs> um, but before we move on to Gill, um, I would like to say that I, for me, Siraj was the surprise package of the last match. I knew what we were getting with Jadeja. Um, I knew what Gill would do. I mean, or provide the, the, the way he played. I was really not sure how Siraj would come in, but I think he was prepared, you know, which... Many times when you have a debutant debut in Australia, they're not prepared. They, they get excited by the bounce and then they go too short. But he, he wasn't, you know, he, he didn't get just, um, he, he didn't get excited by it or he didn't, you know, just get carried away. Um, but moving on to um, Gil, yeah, I mean, dude, <laughs> it's uh, leaps and bounds when you compare to Shaw. I think, uh, you know, we all have made our points clear about Shaw. I don't want to really dwell on him. I, I liked Gil. I mean, there were definitely, you know, he had a few chances, I think, in both innings. So he was a little lucky. But you could see, you know, with some of the shots that he hit and just his mindset, even with the chase and, you know, getting us over the hump, you know, while Agarwal and, and Pujara got out, you know, just shows his mental strength. And again, you know, he was prepared on his debut, you know, like a young guy, uh, very impressive, I would say. Jit, if I had to go to you next on Gil, um, why is it, though, that a guy who was stroking the ball so well, um, yes, he's facing uh, one of the best seam attacks in the world, but um, a guy who was stroking the ball so well, some beautiful straight drives, you know, he hit this one on drive that was, you know, top draw. Um, but why is it someone like that who had already gotten a 40 is then playing away from his body and getting caught behind... Um, from what looked like a really rash shot, is it sort of premeditation? Is he, you know, looking to attack every ball and then got carried away? Um, what do you think led to his downfall? And, you know, um, I guess, are there any technical flaws? I think when you have a mindset like that, you, you, you're one way or the other, right? Um, it's very hard to be kind of, I, that comes with maturity to pick your balls. Uh, he's still young. It was his, it was his debut, and he was base, facing the best bowling attack in the world, in my opinion, right? Um, on their turf. So I think the mental toughness he showed in that first innings, in particular, to play out the day, was immense. Uh, and good players make mistakes too, right? Um, but I think uh, it. He'll make more mistakes like that. Uh, I think it's just a maturity thing to pick your balls. Uh, but man, that, that attitude, India has very, I, I don't know, I, it feels like Dhoni bought that attitude in of I'm um, going to look for scoring options and be positive because India wasn't like that. Um, and, and I think this new crop coming through is embodying that um, personality. And Gil is like, the the best expression of that personality he brings so much to that top order much needed it's it's kind of like a matthew hayden type person in that opening spot india has needed that well the interesting thing is and i'll go to sid next which is um yes uh there is a um a view that being positive um can really get you on top of the bowling. So like David Warner is the best, best sort of exponent of that in today's opening batting. But uh, how many good opening test batsmen are there in the world today? Um, I think Harshal Bogle was one of the guys who picked the ICC test team of the decade. And he said on, on air that, you know, they struggled to find um, opening batsmen aside from Warner and Cook. Everyone else was sort of very average. Maybe Tom Latham was decent, but that's it. Uh, what's your view on that? Um, you know, uh, would you back the idea that being positive is a way to go as an opening batsman in test cricket? Um, look, as cricket transforms and changes over time, uh, that is, it's a, it's a latent thing that's going to be there with, um, with the younger generations. That being said, I do believe if you look across the board, as you mentioned, um, every single test playing nation, even the top ones, uh, they struggle to pick a solid opening comb combination that will last them three, four, five years. Why? Because simply because people forget it's very difficult. It's very difficult to face that 
swinging new ball. That's if you watched uh, some of the some of the deliveries coming from uh, Cummins and Stark. I mean, the ball is uh, the ball is swinging swinging in, hitting the pitch, and seaming out at 145 kilometers per hour. It's not a joke. So um, as Jit said, it will come with experience. Uh, while it's good to have the mindset that I want to score uh, freely, there, there's a fine line there. It doesn't mean that I'm going to go after every ball. You still have to respect the good balls. And if that means that for the first 10 overs on a, on a, track, a track such as that one with, with a world-class bowling attack, you score at three runs and over, then so be it. Um, I, I'm not against having the mindset that you know we, we need to score runs. Uh, and oh, I'm not just going to leave every ball that's outside our stump. I'm not against that. But at the same time, then there needs to be some sort of filter uh, that will come with, with experience. So uh, personally, I, it works for Pajara, for example. But his mindset is not something that I would see being reflected in a lot of younger players coming through. It works for him, but I don't think that's going to happen much in the future. But at the same time, you know, a, a Sewag is not, is not born every day. So, so there needs, there's a fine line that needs to be found. And I think with time, Gil is showing all the right characteristics um, to, to transform into that player. And um, yeah, that's, that's my two cents on it. Rashid, uh, it's, Jit brought up a great point, which is um, experience and maturity will help him with his shot selection. Um, there was an interesting point that Stephen Fleming um, brought up on commentary yesterday in the New Zealand Pakistan test, which is oftentimes young players get confused when they say that with positive intent means they need to look for boundaries and sixes. Mm. Reality is you could defend positively. You know, you look at Warner when he defends, you know, he kind of just, he's almost like charging at the bowler. Yeah. You know? And then the ball, and then when he does defend, it's, the ball doesn't just drop there. It almost like sometimes it goes for four. Mm. Um, so, you know, it, is there a communication issue? Um, you could say Gil is a bit new and fresh, so maybe not with him, but is there a general communication issue in, in Indian cricket? You know, is, is there a bit sort of lost in translation, perhaps? You know, some of them are not necessarily fluent in English or uh, I don't know what language Shastri is speaking to them in, but, uh, you know, uh, is there a bit of an issue there where, you know, intent uh, gets interpreted as look for boundaries aggression yeah it could very well be you know i think kind of you know you know as you know nick i know it's one of your pet peeves where the word intent is kind of thrown around quite a lot um and it doesn't necessarily i think you're right in, in saying intent doesn't necessarily mean aggression and there's a big difference um you know i think in a gill um or for that matter anyone kind of you know you know if you've got a test cricket you've obviously done the hard yards and you kind of you you, you practice you know the long hours and you got to go out there and play that game that's got you to that level um, and not try and change it. I think another you know, minute to try and change the game that's got you to the test level when you've got to the test level is kind of, you know, when you see the downfall. Um, where the fundamentals need to remain the same, then you kind of improve your skills. So I, I thought kind of Gil, you know, has the temperament. He was obviously, as everyone was saying, you know, some of the balls that he faced and he played and missed quite a bit were unplayable. Um, and anyone facing those deliveries would have would have missed them. Um, but I think, kind of, you know, Adam Gilchrist said um, something in the um, you know that Amazon series where he said, you know, the the the, the most important ball you'll face is the next one. Um, and kind of, you know, yes, you will play and miss, but you know, concentrate on the next one, back your skills, back the game that's got you there, um, and you know, play the ball on the merits. Like they say, sometimes. Uh, you know, that old phrase used to go that you were too, you were good enough to nick it. So maybe yeah. Prithvi Shaw was good enough to get an inside <laughs> edge both times. <laughs> Let's not even go to Prithvi Shaw. Vedang, uh, uh, before, sorry, last topic before we go on to the selection of the next test. Um, and then after that, we'll go to anyone if they want to, you know, talk about anything we've discussed. Um, your thoughts on um, just the uh, phenomenon that has become uh, Boomerah. Oh, yeah, just uh, just before I answer that question, Nick, I just wanted to add one more thing of uh, Gil, which struck me, was the time which he had while playing his shots. I mean, you know, I just felt, yes, as Rashid said that, you know, he missed, I think, the first five balls of the, or, or rather five balls of the first 10 he faced. But uh, the time which he had, I mean, yes, it was just a 45 run innings. But I think that gives us a lot of comfort that, you know, 
I feel is here to stay, and I think uh, a lot of credit should actually be given also to Rahul Dravid on this. I think he he was the under nineteen coach, and the uh, I heard one interview of Gill also after the match, or uh, maybe in one of the end of the day, and I think he's really humble. He's willing to learn. and he's also willing to you know uh, take the mantle of opening the inning so i think that's another positive uh coming to your question of uh, bumra i mean uh, what to say i mean uh, he, if you see if you see came into the test series with a very ordinary uh, i would say um, you know ipl and you know they were all saying about his odi performances also and everything i mean the odi i think he had picked up one wicket in the last seven odis but uh, you know when he had to raise his hands i mean he did raise his hands and i think uh, uh the most striking thing about bumrah is that you know uh, even if he's not getting the wickets he's not that uh, he doesn't go for runs so you know that is one thing i feel you know because an attacking bowler you call it a, i'm not trying to compare or lead to him or anything because i think it's still very early for bumrah but i just say that you know lee and all because they are attacking they go for runs sometimes but i feel Mumra still keeps it very very tight even if he's not give it, getting the runs because I mean I might be wrong on the stats a little bit but I think even in those ODIs which he did not pick up any wickets I think his uh, uh, economy rate was just about five point two or five point three if I'm not mistaken so even in the test matches I think he has he has done that that you know even if he's not picking up a wicket or two in uh, the spells I think he's keeping it really tight so you know I, I mean he's fantastic I mean. Uh, I I'm kind of speechless seeing his performances. Yeah. Any sort of uh, responses to anything we've talked about before we move on? Yeah, just on the bowling attack side, um, uh, I think this whole captaincy debate is 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 a little bit wrong. Um, in that it doesn't matter who the captain of India is to a degree, right? I mean, that bowling attack is the best that india has ever produced i think the depth as well of bowling india has yep. never had it um so uh, you know my sort of closing comment on that would be um a guy like bumra even to see siraj as as a second string bowler come in and perform like that uh, i i think if if rahane ends up winning the series it'll be because of the bowlers again Well, it's it's a, it's a good point, and I wouldn't mind spending two minutes on it, uh, Jit. Which is, do we really think that there was um, an improved captaincy performance, or was it just a mean reversion after that first test yeah, match? Yeah, look, uh, I think captaincy is less about being the best player in the team. It's it's actually about being a good captain, right? and the thing about great captains that i've found anyway from the past is they spend a lot of time practicing their captaincy uh, and being a good leader actually takes a lot of time so having your uh, you know your best skill being say batting or bowling and i think kane is going through this at the moment where he's invested so much in his batting not saying he's a bad captain but in order to build that team that's you know dominant for a long amount of time i think your captaincy needs to have that focus on captaincy right um and and someone like a, a rahane where you know those leadership qualities come naturally to him where i mean i wonder what kohli would have done when he got run out but if he got run out by jadeja versus what ajinkya rahane did right um Uh, those are very two different qualities and i think if india is thinking about the long term dominance uh, that everyone's kind of hoping for you know the the clive lloyd west indies um type team then i think we need to think very seriously about who our captain is and ensure that uh, it's the long term so do i think the captaincy performance was better i actually think it was the lack of seeing ajinkya rahane on tv that made it better right we weren't so focused on rahane uh, and and it and i i loved it i thought it was refreshing for india that that's an interesting point and i wouldn't mind spending a little bit more time on that because i think people will have their thoughts uh, kushal looked like he uh was in deep thought there don't know if you have a response um i mean 
I haven't thought of it the way, you know, you just uh, explained it, but I, I look at captaincy as like two things, right? You can be tactical, you can be very good at man management, uh, you can have a bit of both, and then you can have the third type of captain, which I think Kohli is, is you can have the, the best player who's performing, who performs under pressure, and then everybody else sees his lead and performs. Um, I think that Rahani, you know, captain. I'm sorry? The inspirational captain, if you will. Yeah, I mean, in this case, I feel like Kohli's his 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 personality is so large that it kind of makes everyone else a little, you know, like afraid of him, and they're like, you know, in awe of him. But you know, I think what Rahani did was, you know, like you 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 know, you pointed out that that gesture that he did to Jadeja when he got run out, you know, like keep it going, it's okay, it's not not a big deal, you know, you're you're a hope kind of thing instead of being upset and and angry. Um, or, you know, when he put his arm around Siraj, um, I think before, you know, he didn't bowl Siraj before lunch uh, on that day. He put his arm around while they were walking back and, you know, just giving him like a pep talk, like you're going to be needed in the next session. So be ready. Um, these are the sh- small things that, you know, I feel like we haven't seen Kohli do. Maybe he does it internally, but we haven't seen him do it on the field. Um, usually, you know, when there's a drop catch or a missed run out, you know he's he's either frustrated or angry, um, and that sort of that sort of fe- feeling goes around you know in the team. And, and I think Rahane was the, the calming factor. You know maybe it's a Dhoni thing. You know because Dhoni was very calm, right? You never really saw him angry on the field, and and that pretty much calmed all the players down. So maybe that maybe our players are just so used to that and seeing that sort of a leadership that that's what they gravitate towards. And I think. That's part of what we saw in the performance of all the players because they were, you know, normally you lose, you get 36 all out, you come back the next game, you're under a lot of pressure. But I didn't feel that our guys were under that much pressure. They came, they came back this, this match with, you know, just clean slate, like they were ready to go again, which I don't know if, if Kohli would have been captain. I don't know if that would have been the mindset of our players, you know. Um, he may have come back super aggressive, like, let's give it back to them. Um, and that could have backfired. Um, but I think, you know, in, with Rahane, we came with a clean slate, like, forget what happened. Let's focus on this game, which, you know, I, I don't know if he would have done under Kohli. He would have used the previous game as fuel to try to, like, make something happen is what I would have, what I imagine he would have done. So that's the difference that I liked about Rahane's stack. Absolutely. I'm going to make one point uh, myself, which is the, I liked your idea of you know the clean slate, and I think the um, what a lot of the players might um, the reason why they might be responding well to Rahane is I think with Kohli because of his superstar status, um, you know, there's always that you know awe, that feeling of awe that you're in the presence of you know sort of India's most um, wanted man, if you will. Um, so, you know, I think there's a bit of that where some of the new players coming into the side feel that he's, you know, royalty sort of married to a Bollywood actress. He's kind of the guy on every advertising hoarding. Um, you know, he is clearly sort of the superstar, whereas Rahane is sort of more like, you know, understated, um, test match player only these days. Um, you know, even in sort of the, the, um, IPL, I remember he sort of came in and played for sure for the Delhi Capitals, but um, he wasn't playing the initial matches. So he's not the superstar that Kohli is. And I think maybe that's, that gives players a bit more confidence to express themselves. Um, it's a small thing, but, you know, I think sometimes that makes a bit of a difference, especially that level. Um, any, any responses to that or thoughts? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in here. I mean, I, I know kind of, you know, lots of people kind of are, are kind of bashing Kohli's captaincy. Um, and I think kind of he's, he's, he's captaining kind of, you know, in his style and, as, and that's the way he needs to and he should. And I think people are underestimating kind of, you know, the, the shift in kind of at least the fitness culture that he's definitely kind of brought in to the team. You know, this Indian team is by far the fittest Indian team, most athletic Indian team that we put out in, on, on a park in a long, long while. And I think kind of credit needs to go to Kohli, uh, you know, to kind of looking to change the culture leading from the front. Um, you know, obviously, Rane has kind of, you know, done a great job. 
uh, I mean, let's be honest, like we were 36 all out, you know, the only way uh, up, the only way kind of forward was up, you know, we couldn't do much worse. And he definitely led from the front. Uh, but I think, kind of, you know, you got to kind of give him an extended run to kind of genuinely judge his captaincy, see kind of how he, uh, you know, does uh, and captains in tough situations, you know, when the opposition is 500 for, for two, you know, what plans does he then come up with? You know, it's very easy, I reckon, to be a captain of a winning team. Um, much harder when you're on the back foot. And I think, kind of, you know, you know, he definitely has the skills. But kind of before we, I think, we go out and say that Rani should be the test captain and Kohli should be the one-day captain, I think we need to give it some more time. Any response? Yeah. yeah, yeah just, I, uh, I mean, I, sorry. I guess everyone wants to jump in. Why don't like, we go Jit, then Kushal, then Sid, and then we'll wrap it up and move on to the next session. Yeah, sounds good. Um, Look, uh, by no means am I saying it, if it, that it's Rahane who's, who's the right captain for India. Uh, what I am saying is I don't think Kohli's that captain that's going to build a long-lasting dominant team um, because I still feel for that to happen, you need a captain who isn't, you know, uh, I look at the camera, right? Every time someone gets a wicket, the, the camera goes to Kohli uh, to see his reaction. Um, not, not the bowler. Uh, and, and that happens a fair bit, right? Um, so uh, in any situation like this, I, I think of a guy like Clive Lloyd, uh, who in my opinion is the best captain of all time. And that will be controversial, but for many reasons, because he wasn't just a captain on the field. He built that West Indian team, but he was a father figure to them, right? Someone who was approachable, someone who uh, w w was nurturing all of the great players to be great. And then when Viv took over, he was ready to take over. Uh, I, I'm just not sure that Kohli is that person who's going to build a team like Clive did. And I want to see a team like that West Indian side for India. I want to see a 15-year dominant team. But are we going to see it with this captaincy? I don't think so. Vishal, quickly. Yeah, Jit, I'm totally um, you know, on board with you. I mean, we've you know had this discussion many times where I, I felt like the South Africa, England and Australia tours of 2018 was a big opportunity for Kohli to put a stamp on his captaincy and, and really, you know, show a path forward. But we started South Africa with the decision to drop Rahane, which basically for me was a stamp of Kohli's captaincy moving forward, which was there's going to be chopping and changing across the board. Uh, no coherent plan of, you know, what our team is, what, what his vision of the way he wants to play is other than just being aggressive. You know, um, you know, I, I don't think he's tactically great. Um, I don't think he has great field placements. He's found to be chasing the ball quite often in the field. Um, you know, and, and so I, I just feel that, I don't know if Rahane is the right guy, but he's, he's shown, you know, glimpses that he could be the guy. But I know that Kohli isn't the guy that we should be having to lead our team. So I'm, I'm more of the opinion that I don't think Kohli should be there along with, you know, the, the fact that, you know, he couldn't get along with Kumble and he got rid of him instead of trying to make it work. Um, you know, it seems like he wants his yes men there, you know, like a Shastri who's just going to say yes to everything Kohli wants. And, um, you know, I, that just shows me that he's, he's not, you know, the, the leader of the highest quality. What, what do you look for in a leader? You know, he doesn't have those qualities. He likes the idea to be captain. He performs well when he has that pressure of being captain, no doubt. But it's not benefiting the team overall. And uh, you know. what were we saying, Nicole? Okay, uh, no, I just just moving on to Sid really oh, quick. Right. He had the response. So, um, wow, uh, a lot of controversial opinions. Um, look, the way I see it is that um, similar to what Rashid said, each captain will have their own style of leading the team. Okay, and there's going to be pros and cons for each person, each captain, whether that be Tony, whether that be Cody, whether that be Rahane. Now, I'm being trying to be as objective as possible and keeping my opinion of Cody's captaincy out of this for the purpose that I recognize that when one captain starts to fail a little or a little more than expected, their cons become highlighted and the pros of the substitute come into the fore suddenly the, the pros of Kohli's captaincy are forgotten. Tomorrow, like Rashid said, if India are 
uh, if Australia were playing Australia and they're 500 for two, I would want Kohli to be the captain in that scenario, not Rahane, because Rahane is going to get timid because of his calm nature, which works in other situations. But that fiery nature that you require in a situation like that to bring someone in to penetrate that batting is more likely to be found through Kohli's captaincy. Similarly, Dhoni, great captain. Great captain is universally known, one of India's best captains. But he was too. Def- I, the, even though I was younger, I remember so many times where he would play test matches for the draw instead of going for the kill at the risk of losing. Kohli doesn't do that. So what I'm trying to say is each captain in their own merits have their pros and cons. And because of the subjective nature of opinions, the fan opinions will keep changing. But I don't agree that Kohli doesn't have the characteristics to be the right captain. And I don't agree that Rahane doesn't have the right characteristics to be the right captain. I feel like it's beneficial for a team to have many leaders in, in, the, in the 11, as you can see with all the strong teams out there. Um, and with regards to who it actually is, that is a very subjective matter that will only you know come to the fore based on the management and at the BCCI. And if we're being real, let's be honest, Kohli is not going to be dropped as captain. He's not, because so, of the influence he has. So can I, can I, I jump? Yeah, yeah. Last yeah. one, and then I'm going to so, move on to the next section. Sid, so I, I totally agree with you that you need to have multiple, you know, leaders in a yeah. team. Uh, under Kohli, you don't have that because Kohli's is like a dictatorship, you know. But in this match, you saw, uh, you saw that that was, you know, uh, the Pujara or the Bumra or Ashwin giving the the talks, and you know, it was. It was more like, you know, he was bringing everyone into the fold. Um, you know, when Kohli captains, it seems like it's his way or the highway. Like, no, I know, have to so... disagree, actually, Kushal. Like, he, Kohli, yeah, I agree. Dhoni, yeah. Kohli lent on Dhoni a lot. And when Dhoni... I think that there's a big difference between Dhoni and all the players that Kohli's leading right now, right? Dhoni was Kohli's captain when Kohli came in. So Kohli had a deferential, um, you know, outlook towards him. And, uh, you know, he valued his opinion, but it seems like he doesn't value anybody else's opinion. No, the I, I, you, but the key of, thing is, I have to point out, Kushal, you said it seems like for each time that you've mentioned this. Yeah, so I mean, I'm not in the team, so I don't know yeah, if it's can't. true. I'm just saying Life from the outside, outside that's uh, what it looks like. Lively discussion, guys. I think, uh, yeah. you know, my, my sort of view on this and to wrap it, this section up before we go on to the choosing the side is uh, perhaps Kohli can, um, you know, view Rahane's captaincy in these three tests as a positive and pick up on the things that Rahane has done well. Um, because I do agree with Sid that they're unlikely to change the captaincy for the, you know, the near okay. future. And I do also agree with basically, you know, aspects of what you all said, you know, the fitness culture that Rashid brought up is, is phenomenal. Um, Jit's point, which was my, when I wrote an article for the Indian Express, my point was um, the same, you know, at that stage, it was more about building a bowling attack that was capable of taking 20 wickets overseas, but with the larger aim of building a side that was dominant for 10 years or 15 years. And I think in order to do that, there have to be changes um, in the approach, in the way they select sides and the way they respond to situations. Uh, perhaps Rahane has, uh, has shown at least part of the way for, for Kohli to not get in get in his own way. Let's just put it that way. Um, and, uh, you know, starting off the next section, uh, I'm going to go to um, a couple of people. Um, who do you pick for Yadav? Who do you pick for, um, or do you drop Mayank Agarwal? Um, and then do you keep Hanuma Vihari in the side? And I'm going to go with Jit. Um, you're going to answer the question on Vihari versus Rohit Sharma. Um, Vedang is going to answer the question on Mayank Agarwal versus uh, KL Rahul. And then going to go with Rashid on, uh, you know, um, who replaces Umesh Yadav. And then the three of us, Sid, Kushal, and I can respond to them. Starting with yeah. Uh, Jit. Yeah, so uh, I think Mayank should be dropped. I think there's there's... There's something not quite right about his technique. Um, I, I just, uh, I'm not a big fan of, of the way he faces up to the ball. Um, I, I think against fast bowling, he's always going to be found out. And Gabba, yeah, I think it's just the wrong place for him to bat. Um, 
Uh, I I would say Rohit Sharma, definite shoe. And I, I don't know when the last time he played Test cricket was um, actually for India. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but just technique wise, it just feels like a better technique to me. And that's all, that's what I'm going on. What I've seen from Mayank just. Yeah. Really quickly on that, Jit, uh, your thoughts on the high backlift. Does it get in his way or have there been other guys like Lara with high backlifts and were successful? Yeah, I, look, the, the high backlift for Lara versus what Mayank is doing are two very different things. Um, Lara was, that was a subconscious movement for him, right? Um, whereas Mayank is forcing his bat to be up somewhere uh, very high. And for whatever reason, um, what I don't get with that is, was Mike like that when, when they played last year? I don't feel like his technique was like that. I, I feel like he's changed it um, a lot from, from what he was doing last year. So um, a very big difference between what Lara's backlift was versus what Mayank's is. Um, I, I just don't feel that technique will work in Australia. Um, it might work on slow pitches. Um, so, you, so you would go with, and then we'll put this to Vedang, you would go with Rohit Sharma, to open um, yeah. instead of Mayank. And if that's the case, then Vedang, do you then pick KL Rahul for the middle order? Or do you go with KL Rahul to open and put Rohit in the middle order? Um, so so my, my thing in that was, I mean, I bet to defer a little bit with Jits there. Uh, I would definitely give Rohit Sharma for Bihari. I mean, that's a no-brainer according to me. Uh, I still feel that, you know, if you're giving Mayank, because Mayank has proved himself in the, uh, yeah, be it the home series, but he has done phenomenally well in the home series. And I feel KL Rahul as a, uh, uh, what do you say, KL Rahul as an opener, and you just bring him into such a crucial match as the third test, I think is a little bit of a, you know, gamble. And I feel that technically, I don't even think so, Rahul is as adept to face up to the new ball, uh, to the Australian new ball bowlers as compared to uh, Mayank. So I think since you've given Mayank two tests, you, I mean, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm backing him because you've given him two tests and he's done well. For KL Rahul, I think it's going to be the first time he's going to be playing, uh, obviously, this series. And, you know, uh, he's had a great ODI series. But, you know, I would still say that, you know, I'll back Mayank to open even for the third test. But yes, Hanuma Vihari should have replaced. I mean, that's my personal opinion. But Sid Jirani, has Mayanks, do Mayanks home uh, hundreds and his strong performance there, does that warrant another test in Australia? Not when you have Rohit Sharma coming back in. Uh, I agree with Jit that uh, Rohit should replace him at the top of the order. And yes, Rohit is relatively inexperienced at the top of the order in Test Match Cricket. But he is one of the most established batsmen and probably giving Kohli a run for his money today in other formats. So just because of his stature, I would pick him and see how he goes. Give him two Test Matches and go from there. Um, that being said, I wouldn't drop Vihari uh, for KL. Uh, I'd keep the rest of the side the same, apart from we can discuss the bowling later. But... Um, just because I feel like from what I've seen in the past, uh, whether it be not only in India, and I know that our West Indies is not the strongest side, but in West Indies and in other test series overseas, Vihari's technique is extremely solid. That can't be questioned, uh, in my opinion. It's, it's, I think it's a mental thing that's stopping him from scoring runs. So with a little bit of uh, encouragement and a little bit more backing, um, which I think will come from Rahani, I think uh, I would play Vihari, um, and I would back Rohit at the top of the order. I agree with Vedang's point that bringing KL in after it's been about two, three weeks he hasn't played cricket just to face up to these guys is uh, is a little bit of a, of a stretch. And if I had to pick between KL or Rohit to be able to deal with that situation, I would definitely go with Rohit Sharma. With regards to um, Mayank Agawal's backlift that we were talking about earlier, Lara's backlift was um, getting to a little bit of technicality here, but Lara started low and his backlift was high as the bowler ran in. Mayank pushes his bat up here before the bowlers even started running. So there's a there's a big difference there. Uh, I feel like that's I think, I think, do... uh, just just told me I think it's also the ten thousand plus runs. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, no, I think it's the fluidity. You know, that, that there's no fluidity to uh, Mayank's. Uh, you know, backlift. With Lara, it was like a part of a motion 
whereas Mayans is like forced up, like you said, Jit earlier, and then he tries to bring it down. But in that, he can't get, you know, he, he won't have soft hands because he'd have to bring it down really quick when it comes at 145. That's the thing. And the that's why the edges are themselves. going, you know. So there's, I think a, there's, a great, uh, there's a great visual um, that they show oftentimes at the end of the over. Uh, this is at least in the Fox broadcast that we see here in the US. Um, they show you from like a slight angle, but higher. So it's from that, you know, that moving uh, video camera. Yeah. And what was astonishing about that back lift was it wasn't sort of here. It was there. Like the bat was almost next to his head. And uh, maybe the bat wasn't next to his head here and it was just there. But, you know, the point being that normal high back lifts are sort of just there or, you know, sort of not in all the way close to your head. They're perhaps like A.B. de Villiers. They even come from Gali. But, you know, his is coming all the way from here. So to go from there all the way down against Stark at 150 Ks per hour. I think that's just a recipe for disaster. I, I don't know, to your point, Jit, I haven't looked and analyzed his previous, um, you know, his knocks two years ago when he came in and scored runs at the MCG and whatnot, but um, there's got to be something different there. I, I would like it's yeah. changed. Absolutely. I think uh, I think from my assessment of it, I think I, I've actually tried this before and I think it's because at that pace on the Australian wickets, I think he's done this for the short ball. Because to go from down to up and then pull or down to up and then block a short ball, it's easier to just go from up. It's all about the weight transfer then. But what, what he fails to understand is that when the ball is swinging early on as an opening batsman, they're not going to go that short at him. I think it's, it's, it's uh, weighing one against the other. So in order to be more comfortable with the short ball, he's now lacking in his ability to play the fuller good length deliveries so there's definitely something he's changed there and i don't think it's helping him so to go back to the selection i would uh, definitely drop him at this moment until he has some time to work this out and um, give rohit sharma a run uh, in in the next two test matches just quickly before we move on in terms of the bowling i think there's a lot of a lot of um, emphasis and importance on Bumrah now because with Umesh and Shami out, it, it makes the pace bowling attack quite inexperienced. Siraj will play again and they'll probably end up bringing Saini in. Uh, I, I can see Saini playing instead of Natarajan. And that's a lot of pressure on Bumrah um, because he's now the senior most uh, pace bowler. And India have managed to take 20 wickets in both test matches. Um, and that's uh, something that uh, that has come with Kohli's captaincy. But now I feel like... They did in the first test, remember? They, uh, they sorry, did. yeah. Um, I meant the second test, man. Sorry. But what I meant is the ability to take 20 wickets. And now, if Australia make a comeback and get on top of the bowling, I don't know if that, if that, if that um, you know, characteristic in this bowling attack will still be there with the onus purely on Bumrah. Um, so these two really have to show up, uh, Siraj and Sani, and so do Ashwin and Jadeja to provide that support uh, with the slow ball. Rashid, I'm going to ask you to give your thoughts on um, who should replace um, Umesh Yadav and then Kushal. I'm going to let you respond to both on, you know, who would you pick in the batting order and the replacement Seema. I mean, I think kind of they're, they're probably two Schools of thought. I think kind of as as with regard to kind of the fast bullying, kind of the cupboard's quite bare at this point. I mean, the reality is it's not just kind of Shami and Yadav that are injured. You know, we haven't even gone there with Bhuvaneshwar Kumar, with Ishan Sharma, with with you know probably our top five pace bowlers. So we're kind of you know quite far down the pecking order. So you know, one school of thought could be um, given it's Sydney and probably takes a little bit of turn, we go in with just the four bowlers. Um, obviously, it'll mean extra workload for Bumrah, um, but kind of we have Judeja capable of bowling long spells and keeping it, it tight. My concern with, with either Sani um, or um, um, you know whoever else, Natarajan uh, or even Shardul Thakur, I think kind of you know they will they will like let Australia run away with the game. They they'll go at four, five, and over potentially the momentum swing will then go to Australia. And then once the momentum goes, it's much, much harder to kind of bring it back. Um, so in theory, kind of the five bowlers make sense. But if we actually look at who the fifth bowler potentially is, um, that definitely gives one kind of, you know, pause for thought. Um, 
push comes to shove just for debates can kind of, i would i would probably go with a, a natrogen actually versus a, a seni primarily based on what i saw in the a game where bowling it quick but straight up and down at, at 140 is not going to trouble anyone um and definitely not the australian batsman i think that a natrogen will probably give you that little bit more control that's probably needed for the 10 overs that he kind of needs to get through that's all um, I won't even see him as a wicket-taking option. Vishal? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, I agree that, you know, we're, we're down the pecking order in our bowling lineup uh, quite a bit. But I would stick with Sani just because he was in the original squad. Um, I don't see a reason why we need to go to a net bowler who isn't even proven at the first-class level. Um, he really made his way through the T20 format into the ODIs. And, I mean, he could surprise us. I... I, I I'm not saying that he he's definitely going to fail, but you know we we bred Sandy for this. He's played a lot of first class A games for India A. Uh, I think after Siraj, he's played the most games. So you um, know, and we brought him in here as our test bowler. So I would I would like to back him. I would uh, I would back him, and I would I would think that he would come out with a good performance in the same Siraj mode. You know, he he'll. He'll be prepared for this this match because he's played. Uh, you know, I think he played in both the practice games. He did not have a good ODI limited over series, but you know, white ball, red ball, different different game. I, I'm I'm backing him here, particularly in terms so of I'm batting. Gonna, um, I'm going to make a statement on the batting and let you respond to it. Okay. Um, I honestly, with the bowling, I don't think there's much difference who we play. I, I just hope we don't play Kuldeep Yadav in getting excited. I don't think Sydney turns as much as we think it does. Um, so I would play a third seamer and I would not play Shahzul Taco. So, so Nadrajan maybe is sort of a variation or Saini. I don't think it matters that much. I think at this stage we're riding the momentum, you know. Um, from the batting's perspective, I'd like to say that Rohit Sharma, you know, with his average of 80 batting at home, um, is going to make a, a huge difference. And I'd, you know, welcome a, a positive surprise. But my opinion is that he's entirely, um, you know, uh, out of depth in this format overseas. Um, I just think as an opener, he's going to struggle. Now, I don't think Mayank Agarwal is the right guy to pick either. Um, I just think that Rohit Sharma has got, um, you know, he plays with his hands, you know, it, which works phenomenally well in one-day cricket. He's sort of the, one of the best white ball cricketers in the world. He, he doesn't have great foot movement. Um, he gets into good positions in white ball cricket where the ball doesn't swing as much um, or seeing off the wicket. Um, you know, I think you have Mitchell Stark running in and swinging the ball, you know, bowling bananas at 150 k's per hour. You know, Cummins attacking your body, Hazelwood sort of nagging away on that length. I don't see him surviving more than 10 overs. Um, so if I had to play Rohit Sharma, I'd bat him at five. Um, I don't know about Bihari. I thought he played Lion really well. But then he made a, the cardinal mistake of trying to sweep him um, on an Australian wicket, which it takes a bit more bounce, you know, got the top edge. You know, if it didn't carry the slip, it would have gone to a short fine leg or something. Um, so... I don't know. Um, I, I actually don't think it makes that much difference if we pick Roy Sharma or Bihari at five. But I would definitely go with KL Rahul as an opener. He's proven himself at Sydney before. He's got 100 there, opening the batting. Um, it tends to be the more, most batting-friendly wicket in Australia. Um, you know, I think if they grind it out there for the first half an hour, hour, maybe get a bit lucky, you know, I would go with him as an opener. And then I don't think it really matters who we pick at five or, you know, as long as we pick one between Saini and Atrajan, not that big a difference to Kushal and then back to the other guys to respond. Yeah, I mean, you know how I feel about um, Nohit Sharma, which is what I call him. Um, I can't stand him. I don't think he deserves to be in this test team. Um, he's, he's the only guy who's 33 years old and people still talking about him as he's got potential. I read a... Uh, I read, uh, like a quote from Shane Warne that he has a potential to be the best batsman in the world. I mean, the guy's 33. He's still working. He's still living on potential. It's, he shouldn't be in the team. I would pick KL to open. Um, from, for me, I think he should have been opening uh, from the first game. Uh, you know, I, I believe I picked him to open, but then we went with Shaw. I, I, um, I think that he's in a good headspace now. 
like you said, he scored runs, you know, it, as an opener in Australia. He's even got a hundred in England. He's got runs overseas. Um, I think he's he will be him and Gil will be the potential opening partnership for us for the next few years. Um, I wouldn't give Rohit Sharma a chance at number five. I would stick with Vihari. Um, as much as I've turned on Vihari, I didn't. I, I really liked him earlier, but I felt like he missed a couple of good opportunities to put up a you know a fight and and a, a statement that hey I belong at this level. I still think that he deserves more of a rope than than someone like Rohit in Test cricket. So um, you know I wouldn't really try to make too many changes other than the first change, which is Umesh. Um, you know he's injured, so we'd obviously get an bowler. And I think Mayank is looking, you know, a little bit out of his depth at the at this moment. So for me, KL should come in, but I don't think we should make any other changes in the team. And I certainly don't. I can't believe that Rohit Sharma walks into the Test team. This guy's not even a regular, and he's been made vice captain. Like, I mean, I know he's going to play. It sucks, but you know, it's just it's it's amazing how people fawn over what they perceive as talent. You know. Um, just because he looks like a pretty player doesn't mean you know he's always he's going to be successful. Imagine making a guy like that captain. Okay, well, um, just you, you quickly know. though, but could, are you re referring to him as Rohit Sharma, the Test player, or Rohit Sharma, the the cricketer? No, the Test player. I mean, obviously, okay. I'd be blind if I said he wasn't a, a good you know ODI player or a T20 player. Then, then I feel like cricket. yeah. You make a valid point. Uh, yeah. The fact that you're right, uh, he's living on potential as a 33-year-old in Test match cricket. I, I have to give that to you. That is definitely a valid point. And your justification behind playing KL also makes sense, as did Nick's. Um, so, yeah, lots to think about, actually. That's an that's a interesting thing for me to think about. Uh, I, 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 I do agree with you. And as a matter of principle as well, again, it's shocking that Rohit Sharma prioritized the IPL over playing for the country. I, and it is shocking that the BCCI and the team management isn't taking a stronger stance against that. It, it's it's it really disappointing. And he actually kind of, if he, he, I can't believe he played the qualifiers and the last few matches for the Mumbai Indians, and then he had to sit out the the, the first leg of the of the Australian tour. Um, it's it just defies logic that he walks back into the team as a vice captain. Nothing to do with cricket, but just like the fact that he did that, the management should take a really strong stance. But Rashid, we've seen this, you know, even with Kohli going back and, and Natarajan being asked to stay back in Australia, right? Like, it's different rules. It depends well, on, on the stature. I guess it's on your contract, right? If you're an A contract player for BCCI, no, you have different Kohli rules. Different. The Kohli thing is obviously for, for kind of the birth of his child. That's completely different. No, um, no, no. What I'm saying is Natarajan was asked to stay back as a net bowler despite him having a kid. Uh, in India, but, and Kohli's allowed to go back, right? No, so that's that's a similar thing. No, no, no. I think so, you're, you're you're putting it you're putting it wrongly. I think Kushal. I think enough. You know, he was offered the chance to stay back, which he then decided to take. I, I, right. I don't know about that. That's I mean, different to say. No one forced him. If he said no, I'm really sorry. I don't want to stay back because the birth of my child is important. That wouldn't have been held against him. Well, Omesh Yadav just had a daughter as well, you know, and that was yeah. yeah. The communication yeah. from the BCCI hasn't been great um, during this whole time. You know, of course, lots of speculation. We don't know if Natarajan was offered the chance to stay back and he oh, decided to stay back. Really, we, really don't know if, we don't know if Umesh Yadav was given the same. He's a more established player than Natarajan is. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the real question is, um, should Rohit Sharma walk straight back in the side? Um, I guess your point, Rashid, was that at a, as a matter of principle, yeah. he kind of, you know, dipped. Um, there was some reports about you know his his father being unwell and he went to see him and you know that that's sort of valid but i do agree that there was some nonsense going on with you know not playing five games and then being 60 percent fit according to ganguly and you know whatnot so but again to your point nick um you know the communication issue is i think what's highlighted here Kohli said in an interview that he was under the impression that rohit would be with them at the airport so i don't think it's I, I don't know, actually. Uh, to be honest, I'm not as fully informed on this topic. I don't know if any of you are, but was it Rohit Sharma's choice to not go to Australia? He said in an interview that I, I'm ready to go. I think it's the BCCI that said that, oh, 
despite you playing those IPL games, if you're saying you're only 60% fit, we'd, we'd rather you go home. So, you know, I, I don't know how much of onus of this decision should go on to Rohit as opposed to the management of the BCCI. Well, why did you he know? play the games if he was 60% fit? Because his priority would be to get 100% fit for the first game of the Australia Tour. So if you're but he would have been, fit, I think he's, he, he said he was available for the Australia Tour. No, you but know? at 60% said, fitness, right? Which is the problem. Yeah, okay. And yeah, explain the this idea. just shows the dysfunction that is BCCI. Yeah. Let's yeah. not get into anything else. The final topic for today, guys, is uh, it's going to be a short one, which is um, on the Australian side. I'm going to start with Jit. Um, how much does David want to bring in, uh, assuming he's going to play? I, my personal opinion about David Warner, I don't want to talk about here. Um, I, I feel like uh, he's going to bring a lot uh, from a cricket standpoint. Um, uh, just he's, he's an immense figure. Uh, and that team has missed someone at the top of the order. Joe Burns was just not the right person to open the batting for Australia. Um, yeah, he's going to bring a crap load. And, and you know, in my, in my mind, uh, I think David Warner, the other thing that he brings is just that uh, relentless need to win. It's that Aussie attitude, no matter what. Um, the feistiness. I, yeah, the, the real sort of, you, you know, he'll sledge you out, right? That sort of attitude. Um, I, I don't mind that. I think that's, that's a great, th- great test actually for India in this newfound sort of uh, u- unified nature of playing cricket that they, that they currently have and the momentum they have. So it'll be a new challenge for India. Uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, if, if, he, if he can get Australia off to a positive start. And, and also like what the Gabba wicket's like, right? Um, won the toss in Melbourne, elected to bat, took a really positive approach. Um, what they'll do at Gabba, because with David Warner, I think it makes it really simple. You just win the toss, you bat, and see what happens. So he brings that confidence back to Australia. And, you know, it, I've heard a lot of commentators saying India are four or five players injured and uh, Australia are complaining about one person. But I don't think... Uh, David Warner is just one person when it comes to the, the his role that he plays in the team. He can change the match single handed. Vedang, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I you want to respond? Uh, just, just wanted to add on to the, you know, Smith has been a dominant person this whole series till now. Uh, we should be mindful of the fact that, you know, if we are going in with four or five, four bowlers, uh, you know, we have if Smith, by chance, obviously, you know, you try to get him out cheaply, but if he gets into, you know, his stride, I think with Warner coming back and Smith, we have a challenge out there. We should not undermine this completely because, frankly, if you ask me in the first two tests, they really did not have a batting if Smith wasn't clicking. But with Warner coming back and if Smith, I mean, he's overdue for runs. So, uh, you know, this straight, like, you know, 200 runs can, you know, look at about 400, 450. And then, you know, uh, having, uh, uh, you know, our bat has to be good and, you know, the onus has to be taken by a bowler. So, you know, we should not undermine that fact because Smith is overdue. And um, I think otherwise the team is quite stable. I mean, they'll just drop Burns and bring in Warner. And um, I think that's about it. I, I mean, I don't think so they'll do any other for the changes, according to me, at least. Uh, yeah. Rashid, really Thank quick, you. do we get lucky at all by getting Smith out um, first innings or second innings? No, I don't think so. I think you know, there were there were good balls. Um, he he seems to be struggling, but like you know, like any good batsman, you got to expect he will deliver. Uh, and he's 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 like there's no doubt about his skill. Uh, he will come good, uh, but it's a question of kind of you know how we get the good batsman out. Any final responses, guys? And, you know, before we do our customary pre-match prediction. Uh, yeah, just I want to say, yeah, team. go ahead. Oh, could, okay. Um, I do feel um, Warner is a big presence. Uh, the last time we won in Australia, um, Smith and Warner weren't there. And so far, Smith and Warner haven't been there. 
uh, with the fact that Smith hasn't scored any runs. So, um, and like I say, he's a world-class player and he will turn up in one innings or the other, either in the third or the fourth test. It's just going to happen. And I feel like Warner's presence will also help him. Uh, and finally, a point that might not be in, in the four is Matthew Wade. If he opens with David Warner, that could be very, very dangerous. Um, they're both um, very attacking batsmen with solid technique. And I've liked what I've seen of Wade so far. So if the two of them do go well, they could get a really, really big score. So it's something to be mindful of, especially with the lack of an experienced face bowling attack. Kushal, really quick, and then we go to our predictions. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, is that we're, we're lacking in, in our pace attack, which is what's going to make David Warner that much more important for them. Because if he can get off to, you know, not just a flyer, but if he can stay and score a big 100, that just puts, that sets the foundation for them, sets everything up for, for Smith to come in and actually build on that. Because right now, Smith's coming in, at like, you know, in the first 10 overs, the first 15 overs. And when he's coming in, he's not able to, get off strike freely either. We're really controlling them. But the fact that we don't have, you know, we're going to have like our second and third seamers who are, who are really not even our first choice. That's going to be, you know, how they show up in the next test is going to be important to see how well David Warner does. Got it. Um, been an awesome session, guys. Uh, final point is your predictions. Um, maybe I'll stick my head out first and say that I think it'll be a draw, um, setting up well for the final test, um, which will be the decider. Let's go with uh, Jit next, followed by Vedang. Uh, I would love to see um, Rahane take a series in Australia, so I'm going to go India. Um, well, for the next test, though. Did yeah, you know? look, it, it, yeah. Um, I, I, want, I would love to see Rahane win the series as captain. So, yep. yes, absolutely. Um, uh, Vedan? Yeah, so I would, I think, agree with Nikhil out there because I've just seen the weather forecast the first three days is quite rainy. So I don't know how much play I'm going to get out there. And uh, as uh, you know, we all know Sydney is like the, um, you know, the best batting wicket. So I don't really see, you know, either of the teams getting 20 wickets of the other side. So I would agree with Nikhil and I would also say a draw Rashid. going by the weather forecast. Um, I think a lot depends on the toss, actually. I think you know, if the team that wins the toss will win the game. That's my prediction. It's not happened so far. <laughs> it hasn't happened at all. <laughs> but um, I, think, uh, I think we'll win. I think uh, last time around, we were in a really good position in Sydney and it rained and we didn't get to close out. I think we'll, we'll close it out this time. Sid? So, despite the fact that uh, I'm wearing an India jersey today, I, uh, my instinct says it's going to be Australia's. Uh, I feel like either, either uh, Smith or Warner will turn up. This is independent of the weather. Uh, assuming the weather stays fine and we get five days of cricket, I'm going to have to go with Australia in this one, mainly because of the presence of Warner and the lack of um, depth in our bowling attack. All right, so two Indian wins, two draws, one Australian win, and then Rashid, we don't know. Uh, <laughs> the depending on the thoughts. Uh, awesome session, guys. It's been really, really great having all of you, especially, the, you know, the new guys and then some of the more regulars. Um, we shall uh, reconvene after the third test. Cheers. Thanks, everybody. Cheers, boys. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.